Hello out there, and welcome to the Revere Ally Veterans Show. We have a great show today. We have a Vietnam veteran. His name is Carl Muji. He's from the 3rd Marine Division that he has served in the Vietnam War since 1967, Carl, when you were in the service. So I want to say thank you for coming here. You're welcome, Mark. Now, Carl, you're coming here to help out Operation Troop Support. Yes. Amongst other things. So why don't you start off and give us a little history of the First Congregational Church. The history of the First Congregational Church. Well, I've been a past uh, member at the First Congregational Church for the past uh, 39 years. Wow. I uh, came to Christ in 1979. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And I've been there ever since, so it's almost 40 years. Um, and Pastor Nick is uh, my pastor, and uh, Tim Bogerman is also associate pastor. Before we get into the Operation Troop Support, people don't know that, but the church does a lot of things for veterans and non-veterans. Every month they have a breakfast on, why don't you tell us, because you're more important with that. Yes, uh, we have a men's breakfast led by Joe uh, DeSantis. Uh, it's been going on for uh, over 10 years now. Uh, he's the leader of the men's breakfast. It's a, a free breakfast. We take a goodwill offering. If you, uh, you can afford it, you chip in a little. If not, it's free. And uh, we talk about current events. Uh, somebody will do a, a, a sermon, and then uh, we just help each other out uh, with different ideas and uh, for the city of Revere and local communities. Right, Carl. And that breakfast is usually the first Saturday of the month? That's correct. And you have to be a senior to come? You don't have to be a senior. You can be. Uh, you can have children and grandchildren. Oh, you and they can come too. You can bring them also. Yes. Oh, and you also mentioned something too that I like about that. The breakfasts that I've been there are terrific. So why don't you tell us what they serve, and so the people will get real hungry listening. Okay. Well, we have some great cooks. We have uh, Carol DeSantis, uh, a man named Steve Bray, Tony Gordon. Some of the guys pitch in, and um, we have pancakes, sausage. Uh, Scrambled eggs, um, fruit, toast, coffee, tea, juice. Orange juice, yep. Orange juice, yep. Bananas, apples. Bananas, the works. We have the works for breakfast. Right, and that's the first Saturday of every month? Yes, it is, Morris. So, if you're out there listening, as we say, come on down and enjoy yourself. Come on down, the first Saturday of every month, unless posted. Very, very good. Also, before we went on the air, you mentioned something about classes Monday and Wednesday. Yes, uh, we have uh, what they call English as a Second Language, ESL, uh, which started uh, several years ago by a man named Fernando Gonzalez, uh, which is no longer with us. He moved out uh, to Virginia, but it is now headed up by a, a man called Michael Dempsey, uh, who is a worshiper at the First Congregational Church as well. Um, we have... Uh, Students from all countries that are coming, uh, a lot of people ask our foreigners to speak English, and uh, so this is the place to teach them English. Uh, we have uh, close to 100 students of uh, many different nations. Uh, it don't cost anything except for $40 they pay for the books. They also have babysitting, which is free, and it starts from 10 in the morning Monday through Wednesday till uh, noon in the afternoon. And it goes on for about three months, and then uh, take a break, and then uh, they start up again later on. I would like to mention one thing, if I may, Carl. We've got a whole list of things that people are going to need or would like to contribute to the Operation Troop Support. But with the holiday season approaching closely, if they got Christmas cards, they can drop it off at the Revere Veterans Center. Yes, the Revere yeah. Veterans Center at the... Uh, American Legion uh, building, the rear of uh, 249 Broadway. And I would also like to say to all the senior citizens out there and the seniors who come to the Senior Center, if you have Christmas cards, please drop it off at the Senior Center and we'll make sure it gets to the troops. So if you have extra Christmas cards or would like to donate your Christmas cards, please do at 25 Winthrop Avenue at the Revere Senior Center. Now, Carl, Colonel Moody was in charge of Operation Troop Support. I knew Colonel Moody, and I think you said you met him. Yes, I have. Right. Now, Operation Troop Support t does what for the troops? 
Well, Operation Troop Support uh, helps uh, get gifts, care packages to our uh, men and women in the armed forces uh, who are in combat zones and even uh, in different countries throughout the world. Right. Now, a lot of people ask me, Carl, and you came up with the best answer I ever heard. Why the government takes care of the troops, why can't they take care of all the other things that they need? Well, while it is important that the government takes care of our troops, and they do in many ways, it's important that our citizens uh, of America show their support and their love for the men and women in the field. While the men and women are serving in the field, we're back home enjoying football games, baseball games, and uh, so it's very important for us to show our support so when they get a card from home and they read it, uh, they'll know it's from the American people and that we uh, really love them and care about them and they're not forgotten. Right, Carl, and I would like to say one thing. You know, when I used to do the Operation Troop Support and there was a Christmas card, we would have the people from the Senior Center, at least when I was there, to sign them, and everyone that got a package, there was a card in there from our seniors, and that's the reason for the Christmas cards, and they loved it. Yes, and our troops love it too. Uh, not everyone gets meal, and uh, when they get a letter from an eight-year-old child, uh, and uh, they see the kid is uh, thanking them uh, for serving, and uh, most of the kids would like to be like them. They really appreciate that. Right, Carl. And also, i got to say one thing. The schools in the city of Revere contribute a lot to the troops. And there's one school I would like to say thank you that not only contributes to the troops, but honors the veterans every Memorial Day. And that is the VA, Veterans at the Paul Revere School. So thank you, Paul Revere School, and to all the schools out there that honored and sent cost to the veterans, a great big thank you. Okay. We also uh, like to let you know that uh, the Afghanistan war has been the longest American war in history. It's been going on for 17 years as we're talking. And uh, we'd like to see the war end, but in the meantime, we have to continue to support our troops. Now, Carl. You was, you're a Vietnam veteran. Yes, I am. Tell us what it was like when you were there. Now, you, you got the purple heart you said. I did, yes. Tell us about it. Well, I was uh, 19 years old in Vietnam. I got there November 10th on the Marine Corps birthday in 67, and I did several months there. I was a grunt, as they call it. I was in the front lines. I was a mortar man. And, um, War is hell, as they say, you know, it's, uh, it's not a pleasant place to be. Uh, uh, war is just bad. I don't know what else to say about it other than uh, I wish all the wars would stop in every country. Uh, but hopefully in our time we'll see an end. Right. First of all, I want to say from a World War II vet, thank you for your service, Carl. You're welcome, Morris. And I got something to pick on with the Vietnam veterans. But it's not with the Vietnam veterans, it's with the people that had the Vietnam. They, I hear the word Vietnam era. I'm a World War II veteran. We had no eras. Korean veterans had no eras. They served their country whether here or abroad. I was overseas. The ones that were here thanked them for their services because someone had to be home. Why did they make the word era for Vietnam? I'm really not sure about that question, Morris. The only thing I can think of is they didn't want to call it war. I, I don't have the answer for that. I can't tell you why. They never should have even mentioned that. I mean, you know, people that were fighting overseas, someone has to be home to take care of that things to get overseas to help them. They're just as important as the ones with the gun as the ones who are shipping the guns. Yes, that's true. And uh, in every war, there's bombs and bullets, and Vietnam had plenty of that. Right. Now, before we get into this Operation Troop Support, Carl, during World War II, most of the fighters were men. Uh, Korea, most of the fighters were men. Yes. Can I say the same for the Vietnam? Uh, no. Uh, well, most of the men were uh, the fighters. I think where there's a difference in this new war, this Afghanistan war, which really isn't new. It's been going on for 17, 17 years. years, right. There's more women now than has ever been in combat uh, situations. Right. And the women's need things that are for women. Can you elaborate on that a little for us? Uh, yes. Uh, well, we have lists here of all the gifts we'd like to send our troops, uh, the care packages. And uh, 
they need uh, a lot of the women need scent body wash, uh, sanitation uh, napkins, hairspray, disposable pink razors, black and brown or blonde hair uh, spray. Um, so much more. There's a list uh, posted uh, on the screen right now. Right, and we'll expand on that a little bit more as yes. we go continue, Carl. Also, donations sent to hospitals that you have a list here. For example, I like to read one. Yeah. They get well cards and letters, and you say they are priceless. Tell yeah. us why, because you were... Well, I, I mentioned it a little while ago, they're priceless because not everybody gets mail. And uh, when they read a, number, a, a, a card or a letter from a child or from an adult, they really, really appreciate it. It uh, brings back the feel of home. Right. And right underneath, it says cards and letters and stationary products. Tell us what those are that they can be sent to and donate it to the VA, Director of Veterans Affairs yes, at uh, the American Legion Building. Yes. Mark Sylvester heads this up. And... Um, we send these gifts over to Colonel Moody, uh, who's in Danvers, and he f uh, forwards it to the troops uh, throughout the world. There's also a, a woman named Donna there. The, Donna Dreesen. Donna Dreesen is very, very active in uh, sending these uh, envelopes and, uh, and gifts. And uh, Mark told a story not too long ago that Donna Dreesen was in the office when Nick Bower was in, uh, the uh, head of the director of the Veterans Services. And... Um, one of the items he got was sent from da Donna Dreesen. And it was a coincidence that they both talked about it later on. Right. And some of the items that they want, I would like to read a f the first three, and you pick it up from there, onto the article stationary products. Okay. The, I think blank, blank cards, which is everybody knows, paper envelopes, and what are the other items there? Okay, I would say Reader's Digest, uh, inspirational books, uh, West End's... Uh, Non-fiction and fiction books, and anything else you could send them. Even right. dictionaries to help them uh, uh, print out different words and learn how to spell better. Right, and the rest of the stationery were pens, pencils, and stamps. Yes. Oh, I was going to ask and you. And envelopes. And envelopes, right. Yep. Okay, under clothing. What kind of clothing do they need there? Well, uh, they, by what they say, they need T-shirts, gym well, shirts. Oh, excuse me. God, they all got to be new. Yes, brand, they have to be brand new, right, they un, uh, unwrapped uh, packages, uh, uh, not used clothes. Right. Um, okay, we want to be clear on that, folks. Yes. Not clear. Go ahead. Not, not everything brand new, please. Uh, T-shirts, gym shorts, underwear, socks, flip-flops, all sizes, uh, from uh, small to extra large. Um, also, the, they do receive um, clothing from the military. But I remember when I was in Vietnam, we had uh, camis. I only had one set of camis, and they was ripped. And uh, I had to wear that the whole time I was there. So as they get their uniforms, their helmets, uh, their boots, and their pants and shirts, they don't last long. So uh, this, this clothing that we're mentioning will really come in handy. On the bottom, it says, way on the bottom, uh, puzzles. Books, games, can you continue with what kind? Yeah, crossword puzzles, uh, brain teasers, uh, playing cards, dominoes, uh, maybe even some board games. Like Monopoly? Monopoly che would be beautiful. Checkers? Checkers. Yep. Chess? Chess. Uh, I'm doing pretty chess. good with that. Yep. And I don't play either one of them. No, I play all <laughs> three of them. <laughs> Not very good, but I play it. Hey, that's great. Now, what I would like to do is, Start off up with the donations that we could do and take them one at a time. So let's make sure we cover every single one of them. So let's start again right from the top where it says encouragement cards and letters. You say they are worth gold to our troops. Yes, uh, that's what it says. Uh, it, it is gold to our troops because uh, stamps, pens, pencils uh, to write home uh, letters to their uh, loved ones. Uh, phone cards to make a call. When I was in Vietnam, we never had phone cards. Uh, half of us never had paper and pencil. We had to borrow stuff. Carl, I got to tell you how times change. When I was doing it, we were sent CDs and tapes. Wow. Those days are gone. Now, all the stuff that we sent, the tapes and the CDs with the music, is on their cell phone. So if anybody would like to donate a cell phone to a troop, please do.
Yeah, I would say so. Uh, anything to help uh, make life a little bearable for them over there. Right. Uh, now, also you mentioned some re religious things like rosary beads and religious medals. Expand on that for me a little, please. Well, uh, you have uh, all faiths in the, in the war zones, and uh, some of these folks like to have these rosary beads and uh, religious items. Right, and people don't realize that, but where you come, the first congressional church is non-denominational. Non-denominational, So correct. anybody can come in and have a... Yes, uh, you don't have to be of any faith. Uh, you can come in and you can uh, enjoy a dinner. We have a couple of dinners there a year. Uh, we also have a Thanksgiving dinner that the church puts on, and this is all free of charge. Right, and what? give us a day and time on that. The Thanksgiving dinner. The Thanksgiving dinner is November 10th. Um, I believe uh, that's a Marine Corps birthday for those who don't know. Uh, and uh, it starts about 1 o'clock. Right. And I have to say one thing. Pastor Nick, who happens to be the pet pastor there, does a beautiful job. For, uh, I was there last year and the year before. So, Pastor Nick, thank you for the great job you do for us and for the people of Revere. Yes, uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, Tim. And uh, I want to thank all the men and women that uh, do the cooking and provide the food. On the Thanksgiving dinners, um, I, think, I, I guess the ones we just mentioned about was uh, the Thanksgiving one. And uh, the people that provide some of these meals for the past uh, several years, by what I understand, is the Good Diner on Broadway Revere. Uh, they provide over 200 turkey meals. Uh, for uh, the senior citizens at our church, and it's all free. It's all donated. That's Samir, isn't it, Sabir? I believe it's Sabir. He does yeah. a terrific job. He also did a good job at the senior center for us. Yes. So, Sabir, thank you. And yep. the good diner, thank you. We also have a couple of dinners. Uh, it's called Angels for the Elderly, which was started in the year 2000. Uh, it was headed up by myself, and uh, me and a team of people did it for over 10 years. And then we passed it down to a... a a man named Nate Bonke uh, from the First Congregational Church who's uh, been involved now for several years. And by what I understand, I just found out there's uh, a young lady named Carmel Dempsey uh, who's going to be uh, taking it over from Nate. So it's been going on now since 2000, almost 18 years. Great. Thank you, Carl. So let us continue now with the, uh, let's say, Let's go to snacks, what you can send, because you don't want to send food that's going to get spoiled. That's one thing. So it's got to be like can salads. Right. Right. Uh, again, when I was in Vietnam, uh, they sent uh, cookies, which I don't agree with sending cookies because uh, they wind up being crumbs by uh, getting tossed over all the packages uh, uh, back and forth. Although it says Oreo cookies in this uh, envelope I have, I would... Uh, I would send more like beef jerky, peanuts, powdered drinks, gum, Cheez-Its, Pringles, hand candy, fruit snacks, and uh, jer jerky's a big, uh, big one over there. You got pop tarts and cereal bars. Yep. yep. Individual packages of cereal fruit. Yep. Non non refrigerator pudding. Right. Power bars. Throat lozenges, individual right. packets of tuna, peanut butter, and Nutella. Right, which is great. Now, talking about sending things like for clothing, just off the thing, like said new socks they could use. Yep. And those hats, I don't know what you call them. They're not the arm. They're like a, a, a cap that comes underneath the hood that they put on that the singers used to sew for the veterans to, that were there overseas. Okay, I'm not sure what... Uh, what the woolen hats, you okay. know, you pull them down. Winter hats. Winter okay. hats. Okay. The earmuffs, can they use earmuffs there too? I don't know. I <laughs> haven't been in Afghanistan. But I would say that they're in the mountains and it's probably cold. Definitely. So I would say uh, earmuffs and, and the winter hats. Uh, oh. I, I, I've never been to Afghanistan, so I don't know. Okie dokie. But uh, they do have toiletries. Uh, uh, read us about the toiletries that okay, they can use. Okay, they can use the soap, the shampoo, conditioner, dental hygiene products, uh, disposable razors, shaving cream, um, body wash, odor eaters, toiletries, Kleenex, baby wipes, 
Q-tips, foot powder. And these are some of the items they could use right. to, uh, to make life a little bit more comfortable for and you. And you know, like if you, let's say if you went out and you just spent maybe $2 or a dollar or even $5, I'm not going to go any higher than that. You go to stores that sell things for a dollar, you can buy all those things, and they're good donations for the troops. Yes, you can. Uh, you go to dollar stores, and uh, you can uh, get quite a bundle of uh, stuff for $20. I, you could get the whole bundle for $20. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Body protection. Okay. There we go. Some more of the list we're reading off. Uh, baby uh, Band-Aid, sunscreen. Uh, aloe vera, lip balm, bug repellent, uh, visine, contact uh, lenses and stuff, hand sanitizer lotions that won't draw bugs, fly strips, nasal saline spray. What is itch cream, if I may ask you? That's not cream that's going to make you itchy. You don't want that on the battlefield. Um, I don't, if, if it's going to make you itchy, no. Okay. <laughs> but if it's going to help you from scratching, yes. Give it to the enemy. Let them yeah, get it. Give it to the enemy. Let them, let them itch. <laughs> right. Okie dokie. Oh, we mentioned the clothing accessories. Yep. Uh, yeah, mention that again, the new socks, clothing okay. accessories. Okay, clothing accessories. The new socks, boot socks, binoculars, flip-flops, and sunglasses. Sunglasses uh, come in handy to keep them from the glare. And, then, and we, right up to need where it says feminine hygiene products for the females. Could you repeat that again so they know for the women that I'm, they can donate that to? I'm a little embarrassed on this one, but I'll, I'll read them off. Right. Maxi pads, tampons, panty liners, scented body wash. And so forth and so on. Scented Raz lotion, hairspray. Yeah, razors. Uh, Disposable pink, yeah. ra pink razors? Why? Pink uh, razors, yeah. Uh, so pink that, razors. So they have to be particular yeah. there. <laughs> okay. And pink razors and black, brown, or blonde hair. Yeah. Elastic yeah. hairpins. Yep, that's what us. I said. I called it spray earlier, but Sport it. Sport bra it, sizes 34 to 36. Yep. Cotton panty sizes 5, 6, 7. Yeah. And uh, also Ziploc sandwich baggies, uh, quarts and gallons. Uh, to wrap some of this stuff in and keep it from getting uh, moisture in it and uh, dirt. Carl, I have to tell you, I'm an animal lover. And I just happened to read underneath. And I was sh not shocked, but surprised. Socks and cotton underwear for men and women. And read what it says under that. And treats for the service dogs. Right. Uh, which is very important because you have... Uh, the, the dogs that uh, check out, make sure that, uh, there's no mines available in the area or uh, any of the enemy. So uh, many of these dogs save our uh, men and women in, in the service. Yep, they uh, sniff out the but the mines are uh, yep. very. Yep. Also, Ziploc bags. Yep, I just mentioned that. Uh, we covered that, and we yep. covered the quart and gallon size. Right. Now, what haven't we covered that they could use? What's well, they could use a, a, a plane ticket home. <laughs> no, that's true. That we would like to have them all come home. Yes, we would. But that's you know, what they like. Like someone said, freedom is not free, and we have to protect our freedom. The World War I vets did it. The Revolutionary vets started it. The Vietnam vets continued, even though they didn't get the thank you they deserve. So they got a belated thank you, but they deserved it as much as any other veteran. Yes. So, Carl, one more time, thank you for your service. You're welcome, Morris, and thank you for your service. Yep. I was, well, World War II was a different war. I mean, it was a war of annihilation. Either we were going to get annihilated, but they were going to get annihilated. You heard what happened on uh, Malmody, uh, where they shot the uh, American troops with their hands tied behind yes, their back? Yes, yes. Okay. And the Battle of the Bulge that we had? Yep. They and didn't the take any prisoners? We did. No. Okay. And That's what war is like. It's legalized. I hate to use the word. It's killing. legalized killing. Yes. Right. And, uh, like I was telling you earlier, uh, the Korean War uh, was called the Forgotten War. And uh, a lot of people, like kids nowadays, don't even know about it. But uh, I was watching on Netflix the other night uh, about the Chosen Reservoir. And uh, there was Army there and there was Marines there. And uh, the battles they went through there were unspeakable. 
So those uh, men and women that did serve in Korea, uh, and I would say most of the women were probably nurses. And uh, we would take our hats off to the Korean War veterans, as well as the Vietnam and Afghanistan and Iraq. I mean, we can name all the wars one after another. Right, and you know, I got to say, I was in the VA hospital, and I want to say thanks to all the VA nurses that took care of me and the troops. But can you imagine a medic going out in the battlefield to save a wounded soldier and be under the enemy fire, which they were? Yes, they're very brave. Uh, we had I a, was going to say that. We had a Doc Fletcher was our uh, corpsman when I was in Nam, and uh, he did uh, a lot of stuff like that. And uh, I remember most of the times, you'd always worry about our feet. We was always making sure our feet were, were clean, we had clean socks, so that we didn't get jungle rot. Uh, there's so many different things they do. Uh, so. Right. Carl, we got about a minute and a half. Take a minute to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, just to let you know, uh, the Afghanistan war has been going on for 17 years. It's the longest American war in history. We have more women in combat than we've ever had before. So we're asking, please, support our troops uh, in sending these donations uh, to the American Legion uh, behind the American Legion Hall in Broadway Revere, to, the, uh, to Mark uh, Sylvester and Donna, uh, who will forward the gifts over to Colonel Moody in Danvers, and they will forward them over to all our troops uh, throughout the world. We thank you for your help and support. And to let you know, the first congregational church that uh, I'm a member of, we've been doing this for over several years now. And uh, every Sunday we collect the items and uh, I bring them to Mark and Donna. Uh, and we've been doing this for the past several years, like I just said. Talk about the address of the American Legion. Okay, the American Legion's uh, 249 Broadway Revere, uh, behind the- uh, City Hall there? Behind the, the American Legion building. Right. Okay, and I want to write and to all the cities, people of Revere, I want to say thank you for listening. God bless our troops. God bless the United States of America, Carl, and God bless you for serving our country. Thank you. And you as well, Marvis. Thank, thank you, you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.